present here research uh, by uh, the Nexa Center of the Polytechnic of Torino uh, with uh, the support of uh, eBay uh, on the Internet of Things. Uh, this has been a research project which has been ongoing uh, for a couple of years and it is at the intersection of uh, uh, law, technology and uh, economics. Uh, we have looked at issues like uh, impact on uh, employment and labor, impact on uh, competition, impact on security, all the possible aspects. Uh, and today we are presenting uh, for the second time the outcome and the result of our research. Me specifically, I'm going to present uh, a paper about uh, the competition aspects. And here the question is, uh, what is so special about uh, the Internet of Things, of Things to require a, a new antitrust perspective? My reply basically is in, on two points. Uh, the Internet of Things is special because it's not only digital network driven, but uh, it's exponential in terms of quantity of data available. And the second point is that uh, our traditional mindset uh, in antitrust uh, has been based on uh, law and economics, the traditional neoclassic uh, Chicago approach. We should dump that uh, and leave it. What is important is uh, decentralization of choices and diffusion of power. This is the basic idea I am trying to uh, propose. Thank you. So IoT and big data in the platform economy. Um, big data today uh, is more and more important. Uh, as we know, we are evolving towards the data economy. Uh, the data economy involves the access to many types of data, public data, uh, personal data, but as well uh, non-personal or industrial data. Uh, we have already a system regulating the control of some type of data, like personal data. But in order to force the data economy, uh, there is a need for fine-tuned rules concerning the access and the sharing of other types of data, including industrial data. Uh, it's a hot topic for regulators in Brussels and elsewhere. Uh, it's on top of the agenda of the Commission and uh, we might see uh, an initiative, a legislative initiative, before the end of the year. Uh, my view is that there shouldn't be any new property rights on information. Uh, on the contrary, the existing rules should be relaxed. The existing rules concerning copyright, uh, by carving out, uh, for instance, text and data mining, uh, by revising some rules on the protection of database. On the contrary, on the competition law side, uh, the rules could be strengthened because there are some risks with the online platforms which are collecting many data and have uh, increased power. So that's just what I wanted to say. Thank you very much for your attention. With billions of devices that send and receive uh, data, the old uh, technological paradigms of centralized data collection servers and even the cloud that don't fit uh, anymore. There is a need of decentralization, uh, a need of not exposing a single point of failure. And uh, for such needs, uh, the blockchain uh, can serve uh, as a very useful uh, mechanism because uh, uh, it allows uh, decentralization, it allows uh, the certification of the data transaction that this public ledger contains. However, in a scenario uh, again of billions or uh, billions and billions of devices that exchange data, uh, for at the actual state, so the current state of the, of the art, the, the blockchain uh, does not fit so well because of 
mainly of scalability issues. The number of transactions is uh, limited uh, due to the proof of work which is necessary in an untrusted uh, environment. The, again, the proof of work is a really heavy, computational heavy task and the energy consumption, which is, uh, which is derived uh, from, uh, uh, from the, the blockchain me mechanism, uh, it is huge. It is ex estimated uh, that uh, a single Bitcoin uh, transaction, for example, represents the 90% of, uh, of the power that is needed to, to a house uh, in, a, in a day. So you can imagine with billions of, of a transaction, what does it mean? And then we have the two other uh, disadvantages. The, the, the first one is the total anonymity is not uh, assured, uh, but only pseudo anonymity. Uh, and, and the last one uh, is that once we we record uh, a transaction on the public ledger, we cannot delete uh, anymore. This is very good for uh, audit purposes, but not for for many other uh, uh, for, for, for in many other cases. Uh, so uh, to conclude, uh, if we don't need uh, efficiency, uh, blockchain could be a very very useful uh, mechanism. But I personally think that in an Internet of Things uh, scenario, uh, with a huge amount of data that is transmitted, uh, the blockchain. Uh, uh, and the current state of the, of the art uh, is not uh, efficient. And if we make it private, so this is another story. This is just uh, distributed uh, databases. So the circular economy is an idea for a new economic model that's based on uh, regeneration and restoration of material value and keeping products and materials at their highest value in use at all times. And there's a number of uh, value drivers within the circular economy to make this happen. Things like extending the useful life of a product, keeping assets in circulation in the economy for as long as possible, and regenerating biological value. And one of the key enablers to achieving these value drivers in a circular economy is intelligent assets, the digital economy, and the Internet of Things, indeed. Uh, which can help to enable the ability to keep products in service for longer uh, through the monitoring of their uh, condition, uh, allowing us to perform predictive maintenance, for example, uh, as well as using uh, tracking to, to know where products are during the value chain and be able to recover them through reverse logistics so that they can be fed back into the system for another, um, another cycle through the economic system. And uh, in addition, we can also uh, utilize uh, the, the Internet of Things to, if, to, to, to more effectively utilize products while they're in use and to minimize what we call idle time or times when products are not being used but are in fact sitting unused, uh, perhaps in a parking lot in the case of a car or, or empty in the case of a building. And so through the smart use of intelligent devices and the Internet of Things, we can rapidly change the economic system away from a linear economy and towards a circular economy. What I hope to contribute to this conference is adding the consumer into the discussion about how the Internet of Things can power a circular economy. Right now, simplified, the dominant, dominant viewpoint is that uh, the Internet of Things and circular economy means the manufacturer, manufacturer retains the ownership of products and then sells the service of the product. I think we should extend, widen the cycle, because uh, that would make a very narrow circle. We should extend the circle to include consumers, third-party developers, allowing the consumer to extend the life cycle of smart things through reselling, reusing, uh, recycling. Uh, and that will mean looking at 
property rights in smart things, both the tangible and the intangible part. It means looking at interoperability, ecosystems of interoperable uh, applications, allowing the consumer to use third party uh, developers for the services of these smart things. And also uh, looking at open systems, allowing consumers and users themselves to tweak, modify and alter the code that basically runs these things. So I hope to introduce the consumer, widen our notion of the cycle and then uh, bring the policy areas of property rights, interoperability and open systems into the debate.